let's talk about matching flywheels. So when we took this motor apart, we found basically what's called jet motor. And the flywheels came right off because they have these they have these uh, nylon collars in them and the silicone lube had spread. They just came right off. You didn't even have to do anything. So now I'm going to use this motor, same one we did in the SD45s. This has a standard shaft size. This one has one size bigger. To get, I looked for some other flywheels, but I've used them all up. I didn't have any, so I had to use these. And even though I like to often eliminate the flywheels in this one, I don't want to make shafts that long. So I'm going to use the flywheels. Now to get them on here, because they, they're too loose and they had a lot of play in them. So what I needed to do was increase the diameter of the shaft so that these would press on and, and it, it's a friction fit. So they got to have, it's got to grip a little bit. What I did was I took this foil tape, cut a little piece off, and then I cut a little piece off. And I wrapped the shaft with that metal tape. And I checked it and checked it until I got a decent fit. But to make sure it stays on there and doesn't just spin around, which it will do right at the moment, but not for long. I used some tacky glue, kind of like a Loctite in here. And that ought to set up nice. And... This thing ought to do its do its job nicely, and it should be a pretty sweet, sweet running motor. Then I went ahead with the frame, and I did a little milling. I needed to cut a little piece here. I needed to cut a little gap there, a little one there, and a little one there. The way the wiring was in this, they clipped on to these things. Then they came up through here which I don't like I don't want them to come up through here because that gives the truck movement back and forth and I tested this on the 15 inch radius which is the truck sitting on it and it works great so I didn't I didn't want to lose that so I'm gonna bring the wires up from here on each side with plenty of room and then oh yes couplers couplers so I wanted to use these coupler pads because I like frame mounted couplers, it gives them extra strength. But the KD whisker coupler with the new snap together draft gear, I couldn't fit it all the way back. And in the past, if you've seen me, I mill this out. But this one is so thin, I didn't want to do that. So what I did was I very carefully put a hole next to where the other, the indentation where you normally put the hole. I put one next to it. And that required me first marking a spot, taking time to drill a bit, drilling a little bit in, taking a little bit bigger drill bit, drilling a little bit in, and then taking it over to the drill press and putting, I put a 1 16th through, and then I tapped it with my 256 tap. And so there's a Katie set that comes with this tap and a couple drill bits, which is, you should have that. But I also got from the Hot Wheels Redline shop this sweet um, holder for it. This is the same holder except smaller than is in my tap and die set. So this was pretty handy. It makes it really easy. A little oil on here. Just go back and forth and you tap right through it. Nice. And then now the screws sit perfect. I did a bunch of uh, deburring. It's, it's in a coat of black primer at the moment, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do the bottom is going to be camouflage brown primer. And then I'm probably going to hit this again, and I'm probably going to, I don't know, satin finish it maybe? Something to make it all nice and smooth? No, nah, maybe not. Maybe I think we'll just hit it with another, another coat. We should be good to go.
or maybe I'll just hit the whole thing with camouflage black. Um, since we got a friction fitting parts on here, we want kind of a, uh, we don't want a super smooth surface. But that is where we're at, and we're looking good. The trucks are ready. We're going to do a little solder now, and then we're going to build a motor map for here. One of the things is that I knew, I was thinking of just discarding these, because I don't really need them. I am going to have to cut them down, because this motor is, at this point right here, it is wider than this, and this was meant to fit inside of here like that i can't do that with this so i am probably going to put since i'm not using motor mounts you know i'm going to build a platform of the right height and then i'm going to use goop i'm going to put goop on it and that's how i hold my motor in so i'm probably going to fill this bottom piece here with lead i'm going to take some old stick on weights and i'm going to fill it up to the top and then i'm going to shim it till i get it to the right height and then i'm going to glue it with goop that way and I put the lead weights in with goop also because goop wherever it went here amazing goop hardware store it lets me change my mind later when I come back and I want to take this motor out all I got to do is twist and pull and it just comes right out and I can peel off the glue so it's like brand new again so it's as permanent as I need it but it is not it's not so bad that I can't change my mind later. And I want to show you something really cool. So, as you know, I'm always scouring the internet for motors and stuff. And I forgot that I ordered these because it took such a long time to get here. I did not realize these are 24 volt motors. Look how tiny they are. Oops, look how tiny they are. Tiny little 24 volt motors. And they have a very small shaft. That's probably a one millimeter shaft. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. But I've always wanted to um, do a crane that had a whole bunch of motors in it. And these tiny ones would be like perfect for that. You make the crane self-propelled and then maybe using a decoder so you can raise and lower the boom and raise and lower the big hook. So that's just a neat little thing that I got. And we'll figure out someday what we're going to do with it. All right, let's get moving on. 